Hey everybody, welcome back. So uh, yeah, in the last two segments, you A, saw me uh, sing notes badly, and you saw me play keyboard all not all that well. But it was exciting because we have web MIDI working and we have pitch detection working through a normal microphone. So this is all in this audio exploration project you see right here. Uh, thus far, we haven't really needed much for front end tooling, but this we're gonna explore um, Tone.js next. And this is kind of a, it's kind of a synthesizer for playing music. It's pretty awesome. Uh, uses the web audio API. Um, unfortunately, uh, we're going to need some front end tooling because we're going to we're going to import tone.js as an ESX module and it's really meant to be imported like through uh, bare module specifiers so we're just going to import tone.js from tone and so we need some help finding tone we're also going to uh, try out a web component uh, that has some piano keys that we can use uh, to play around with tone.js that also needs uh, some help from web dev server. We can't just call up the .js files here. So we're gonna need some help. So I'm gonna add a package JSON to our file right here um, and install some stuff. So here what I'm doing is I'm importing this piano keys web component. Uh, it's an old one, but it works really well. I'm, I'm glad I found it. Uh, Tone, uh, Tone.js, uh, They've been at it for a while, version 14.7, right? Um, and then web dev server, we're also gonna have a, uh, a, a serve task to serve web dev server. I guess we'll start with a virtual keyboard example uh, as one of our two. So um, let's get this installed right now. NPM install. Now I said we're gonna start with the virtual keyboard demo. Um, that's as good a place as any, so let's add that. So add an HTML demo file, virtual keyboard demo .html. And let's call this a virtual keyboard because that's what it is. Now I'm gonna pop a script tag right in here and close it up. Yes, I could very well just put the source uh, and point to the point to the web component, but I'm gonna add some stuff below this. So this is why I'm keeping it open like this. So we're gonna import piano keys, the web component here and then we're just gonna set it up. So honestly, I think this should just work right off. So let's just get the server with web dev server and see what happens. Yep, that is a keyboard. Uh, and, and this is great. I mean, it functions pretty well. Got it right off of NPM. And it's, I feel like it's like a four or five year old web component at this point, still functions great. So this is a good start. So let's keep going. Now, the next thing I wanna do with this keyboard, obviously, is listen to some keys. So uh, every time you get a note down, you get an event. So for now, let's just console log the event, the event dot, uh, I think it's the detail dot note. Cause I think these are custom events. So they have that detail property, but uh, E dot, detail dot octave here. So we can get the note and the octave of what we're pressing. With that loaded, I wanna open up our dev tools here as well. Let's put this side by side so we can see things better. Uh, so console is open. Um, I must've pressed something already cause I got a C5 here. So let's, let's start playing. So E3, that's right. Uh, let's say F sharp three. Yep. Cool. So we're hitting some notes. We're getting some events. All right, this was easy. This was easy. Now we got to set up Tone.js, which is also pretty easy. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to add another uh, JavaScript file. So another another demo for the technology we're working with, and that is Tone.js demo JavaScript. All right. And again, I'm going to treat this like a global object because there's not much sense in having various instances of this up all over the place. Uh, it's easier, I feel like, to manage this all from a central place, a global singleton static class. So let's create that right now. I'm gonna call this synth. And obviously, since we're using Tone.js, I'm gonna import that as well. And again, this is why we're using Web Dev Server, come just say, import tone from tone. Um, and, and the web component, I had to do pretty much the same thing. Uh, there's some inner modules that need to resolve and they're bare module uh, specifiers. So, this is what we need to do. So let's fill this out a little bit. Um, like everything else, I think I wanna have some listeners and I also actually wanna create that synth that we're gonna use uh, everywhere we're gonna call to play a note. And of course we need that synth, we need that tone synth to destination. Um, and this will like set up a synth for us, ready to use, going right to our uh, audio drivers. We'll add our listeners, cause they've been the same everywhere and I don't really, 
I don't really need to explain them anymore. But past that, let's just plow ahead and see how far we get. Uh, I want to just go and start adding some methods here. So press, release, press, and release. So basically, press, you're going to press it, and then you have to release to actually release the synth note. Uh, press and release just has a certain amount of time or duration that it's pressed for. You don't have to, like say it's up again. So this will help us when we when we have a you know indeterminate amount of time when we're using the mouse, pressing the keyboard, and then letting it up whenever. Given the fact we just want to let this up whenever, we have to record some times of when things are pressed so uh, Tone.js can work its magic and do the release properly. So this is why I have a synth timing dictionary right here that records the tone time so it can kind of uh, do the proper like uh, press and release and kind of trail off if that's the sound of the synth. So let's add this global synth timing dictionary right here and press notation octave. This is all good synth. I think this might be all we need. Let's try this out. So we'll go back to our virtual keyboard demo. We're not gonna log this anymore. We're gonna get some notes in. Now for this, it's gonna be super easy. I'm just gonna press and release at the same time. We'll do this for this demo, uh, but in the future, uh, our actual application um, that you'll see is going to be a little more complicated where we actually do press, hold, and release whenever. But we do need to import the synth as well. So let's import synth from Tone.js demo. There we go. Uh, and this, I think this might work right away. Now this 8n, uh, a little cryptic, it is an eighth of a note. So depending on how fast your beats per minute is with Tone.js, we'll set this later, but for now we're just gonna use the default uh, beats per minute, whatever that is, and just play an eighth of a note, however long that is. So uh, it'll work out. But in the future, we're gonna add a metronome. So I'm excited about that. So we'll be able to set the beats per minute as well. But I think we're ready to try this out. Another moment of truth, you see that Look at this. We have the, the icon, the audio icon lit up, so something's happening. But yeah. So yeah, we have this, we have a synth already working. So it really wasn't that hard. And, and most of this is due to how amazing Tone.js is, I think. So I'm actually gonna add another HTML file here. Um, and it, we're not gonna explore the keyboard anymore. Uh, we're gonna just explore some things with Tone.js. So my new HTML file here is going to be synthdemo.html. And again, give it a title, synthdemo. And for this one, I'm gonna add a more boring UI here, a button to start and stop the metronome, uh, an input field to control how fast the metronome plays, and then uh, just a, a play sound button as well. So. This should be this should be pretty easy. We can get the play sound button working right away. So let's create another script tag where we can add the the synth import as well again. Uh, so we're gonna import synth from Tone.js demo. Yeah, we'll just start off with play sound. So when that play sound button is pressed, we're gonna press and release a B flat in the fourth octave uh, again for an eighth of a note. So let's give that a go. So again, ignore start and stop metronome and the, the beats per minute here, because we haven't wired those up yet. We will soon, but playing the sound, let's just play it. Perfect, perfect. Now my metronome, it's actually gonna be a wood block. So I have, I, I, I took this uh, wood block wave, uh, wave format audio file. I took this from the Tone.js example. So let's, let's pop this into our project here. Then I'm gonna add on a few things to our Tone.js demo class here. So we're gonna add metronome loaded. So this is an indication of whether the metronome is loaded or not. Um, the metronome timer ID, uh, and then the metronome player. So we're, we're gonna start loading this right up here. And I'm also gonna set the beats per minute here uh, to 60, pretty low. Um, and I'm gonna set the metronome in interval to play every quarter of a note. Two more properties here. Uh, is the metronome running? Um, so there's there's loaded and there's running. Now this silence feature of the metronome is not very helpful right now, but in the application uh, we're building that you'll see, the um, 
all all the the timing of the the quizzes the countdown timer is going to be powered by a metronome timer and so you want the ability to turn the metronome off stop listening to it but you still want that timing to happen that that tick 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 to carry things along in your timer so as a one-time thing is at the bottom of this class when this when this script loads right here we're going to set the uh, the tone js beats per minute and so that's going to be our 60 that we defined right here. And um, we're also gonna say uh, on load, we're on load of the audio buffer that we have through Toe.js, I'm gonna say the metronome is loaded and mark that true so we know it's loaded and we can use it. And then I wanna add a few more things here. Um, the first is the ability to set the beats per minute from the outside. Uh, so you can just call into this Tone.js class BPM is 60 or 90 or whatever that is. Um, and then obviously you wanna be able to get the beats per minute as well. Um, this tone now thing, this gets this gets a timing uh, mechanism from Tone.js. We're not gonna use it in this demo, but it's gonna be handy in our main application. And next I'm gonna add just two functions, the easy ones, uh, toggle metronome. So if, it's, if the metronome is running, I wanna stop it. And if it's not running, I want to start it. And then stopping the metronome, uh, I'm going to set this running to false. So we're indicating it stopped running. And then set the tone transport to stop. And then clear the timer ID. So we have a fresh new timer when we start it up again. And of course, I know you know what the last thing we're going to add is, is start the metronome. Uh, so let's do that now. Now, start the metronome. If it's already running, don't do anything. We're our job is already done. Um, but otherwise, tone dot start 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 tone js, um, and then uh, we're setting our metronome timer ID. So you can imagine this is a lot like set interval, where your you know you set interval, you get an ID for your timer back. This is just like that. We're, we're saying tone.transport schedule repeat. This is basically an interval timer that we're capturing an ID for. Um, and then uh, we're saying uh, if it's, if we don't have this thing set to silent, then start the metronome player, start it up. Uh, and then we're for each listener uh, we have going, we want to hear that tick, tick, tick. We want to send out that event. So like I said, in the main audio application, our practice application we have going, uh, we're going to use that timing information from the metronome to power our countdown timers um, or our count up timers, whatever they, that may be. And so then we just we just start it up uh, and then we can mark the metronome running as true. So that's all there is to this class now. So let's go back to our demo page, synth demo. So of course we had our synth running. That was fine. We just press a button and we can make it go. Now we'll add the metronome. So just adding two event listeners here. So when you click toggle metronome, it's gonna turn it on or off, toggle it. And then uh, as your input field changes, the number changes, we're gonna set the BPM to whatever that is. I wanna add one more thing though. I just wanna see the metronome firing off. So we're gonna say synth add event listener and just console log an event and see what see what it comes up with. So now I think we can we can start this up. Uh, so here's our demo action. Since it's a not a very big UI, we'll just open up the console tools again. Uh, so let's start this metronome. And you can hear it and see the event coming back at the same time. So let's stop this and everything stops. Let's start it up again, but really crank this up. So let's make it a little faster. You can kind of hear it slightly faster, but let's crank it up. 120. Yes. Uh, how fast can we go? 240 is probably ridiculous. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be playing at 240, but uh, let's set it to 20. We're going to be waiting a long time for this. <laughs> All right, I think, um, I think 95 is a good... That's something to play music by. Uh, but we are done. Well, let me stop the metronome. We are done playing music. Uh, we're done exploring audio. We'll come back to it when we get to Reactive Controllers. So we're going to take all of this, these audio goodies and wrap them up as Reactive Controllers in our next segment uh, and just kind of fill in our application. So yeah, this will be great. If you've never done anything with Reactive Controllers before, 
they're exciting. Uh, so we'll explore them. I'll probably do some things you shouldn't do with them, but it, but it's interesting nonetheless. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. We're gonna we're gonna talk about controllers next. Lips controller.